things I do in spring is to start with seeds under lights or in a windowsill and usually way too early so they outgrow their little pots and start to get leggy. So one of the things I figured out how to do is to take my recycled um, seltzer bottles and two liter bottles and turn them into a self-watering planter um, where plants can grow to a pretty good size and, and transplant nicely into the garden. So this is just a quick demo on how to do that. The important thing is that you, um, I use seltzer bottles, but if you use a pot bottle or something, you wanna make sure to wash it out really well. But I wanna measure just over four inches up from the base because the idea is to cut this so that the, the neck of the bottle touches the, the very bottom there and nests in there so that the plant is able to water itself when it gets thirsty. You leave a little reservoir of water down inside of here. Um, most plants uh, won't survive getting thirsty. A plant that has a, a hard childhood uh, isn't really gonna thrive in your garden. So you wanna make sure you don't let your plants dry out and this is a way to do it. This is especially nice for tomatoes um, because you can plant the seedlings in there nice and deep and they grow a good root ball. And when you lift it out to put it in the garden, it's shaped like a little torpedo and it drops right into that hole nicely. So I'm going to make sure that I've got this the right height. Okay, I want it to be just over four inches. Um, you can do this with scissors as long as you start out with, I like a, a sturdy box cutter like this one. Um, but you can also cut this with scissors or I've used a bread knife or... Um, and it doesn't have to be pretty and it doesn't have to be perfect. Actually, I should have probably poured the rest of the water out of this one first. Here's a drink. All right, so I'm just going to cut this all the way around. And this is super quick and easy. Okay, so I started it with the, with the razor. Once I get a hole, I can cut this all the way around with scissors. And then I want to test it. I want this to touch there. So if I push this in there and give it a little shove, and if it's just the right height, it fits in there nicely. I'm going to cut this down because I don't need quite that much space. So now I've got a little self-watering planter. These will sit on a windowsill. Um, when the weather gets nicer, I move them outside in the daytime and then bring them in after dark. Uh, so I'll fill this with potting soil and when my seedlings are a decent size, I just poke them in there and then anytime this water is gone, I refill it. They don't get the root rot and they don't get boggy because they're able to, the, to wick the water up from the bottom anytime they need it. So this is when they, they say a plant is best if it's watered from the bottom. Um, the roots keep reaching down deeper to get the water instead of being shallow on the surface. So we go through several of these a week and I save every single one and turn it into a planter and it makes a nice little fleet of um, transplant pots for a windowsill garden. Okay, so uh, self-watering planters uh, are kind of expensive to purchase, but they're really, really useful because uh, plants that are set on a porch or a patio or plants that are inside can be forgotten and go dry. And once a plant goes dry, it shocks and it takes a long time to come back from it. Overwatered plants, if a plant just in a bucket gets root rot, the bottom gets boggy, the tips of the leaves start to die because it's too soggy. So a self-watering planter that you buy in the, the big attractive ones that you buy at your garden stores are basically a, a bucket with a false floor that the soil is in and then something that wicks down into the a water reservoir in the bottom. So what I've done is I've taken these, these cat litter containers, um, which I have in great surplus and, and get tired of recycling in other ways. And I've cut the bottom of this out and this is the water reservoir. This top part already has an opening here that is going to allow water to wick upward into the soil. So if I fit this into here, I have a self-watering planter that's not going to get boggy, but every time the plant is thirsty, it can suck some more moisture up from the bottom, okay? So the way we do that, it's pretty fast and easy. So every bucket is shaped differently. 
But for this one, I tested it out and like four and a quarter is a good height for the base. And uh, your mileage may differ depending on who makes your, your cat litter. I start this with a box cutter. Um, you can just start it with a box cutter and switch to scissors if you like. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's going to be a bucket of dirt after all. Um, be super careful not to hurt yourself. So now that this is in two sections, this will fit down into the bottom half. It should be so that the so that the um, opening in the on the top is touching the floor, and that's that's uh, where the the water is going to wick upward from that bottom reservoir. Um, I can further cut this down depending on the height of the plants that I want to put in here. You don't want the reservoir to be um, or the the top part to be too much taller than the reservoir, um, and then. These are good for transplanting seeds into, but I, you could also start seeds in these. Um, the beauty of these is that they keep you from getting root rot from things being too wet and boggy, and they keep you from letting your plants get dry, which can be really hard on a plant. In some cases, I will cut a little slot in each of the corners just to allow some more space for the inside to fit. But that's just a matter of making it look pretty. You don't really need to do that. And then you can write You can write on the outside so that you don't forget which plants went in which place.